Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video I am going to be doing a preview of AD&D 2nd Edition's The Complete Book of Necromancers. So um, this, is, this is the most recent of my uh, acquisitions off of uh, eBay. Um, the book ran me about $60.00. Plus shipping and handling brought it up to about seventy dollars, which is around the the most expensive uh, that I've spent on these splat books from uh, from AD and D Second Edition on eBay. Uh, and the reason why I was I was kind of willing to do that was because uh, I was hearing more and more that this is becoming increasingly hard to uh, get your hands on. So I, I certainly wanted to. Kind of complete my collection as far as I am interested in a D and D second edition. Um, I, I I pretty much have all of the complete guides to all of the classes and subclasses, all of the races, as well as some other um, some other supplemental books along the way. Uh, so my complete collection is is probably close to uh, twenty five or thirty. Uh, books and all in the second edition line. So uh, I'm going to start going through this a little bit. I will, from time to time, make uh, revisits to some of these books where I'm just doing a preview of them. Uh, it just so happens that in my Castles and Crusades campaign, um, the the player characters in the group they came across a. Uh, they came across an artifact, which was a, a tome of necromancy. And uh, I was only fleshing it out with uh, what spells and everything that I felt could fit in there. But that was before looking at this here. So I will probably be taking a lot of the spells that are in here, which are both, uh, which are both uh, magic user spells uh, or wizard spells and clerical spells on top of that and and importing them in so i i will have to kind of recraft that um recraft that book that they uh already received and uh and probably up their experience points as well for having gotten a book with far more spells uh built into it so um i'm sure they won't object to that uh, either so uh without further ado Let's start taking a look at the book. Now, I've, I've decided that I'm going to do these differently. I do have a PDF of this, and um, it's a little bit harder to read because it's, uh, its printing is, uh, is not the best. Its scan is not the best. But, um, but there's so, times when I want to just show it to you in the book as well. So this is written by uh, Steve Kurtz. And the art, uh, which you saw displayed on, on that front cover there, and that will be the thumbnail for this, uh, for this as well. The, uh, Steve Kurtz is the, uh, is the design uh, editing by Matt Forbeck. So uh, this goes back quite a ways uh, where Matt Forbeck was uh, attached to TSR. Um, and let's see, this was 1995. So... Um, so we continue on with uh, the color illustrations are, are by Brom, Jeff Easley, John and Laura Lackey, and uh, Robe Rupel. Uh, cartography is by Diesel, and uh, typography is by Nancy Kers Kirkstra. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce any of those. Uh, certainly a lot of uh, playtesters involved in here uh, so that's always good to see because that's one thing that I heard about uh, D and D second edition or a D and D second edition was that uh, some of these splat books were were not heavily play tested uh, before they were released and so uh, sometimes you have some imbalance with them and uh, you know and a, a lack of usefulness in, in some cases but uh, you know, I can already see using this in a number of ways, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, the art, the full color art here is just phenomenal. Um, 
it's hard to tell uh, some place like I'm looking for. I have a feeling this might be a Brahm. Um, you know, Easley's I definitely recognize, but this is probably a Brahm um, piece. They they should. It, it's hard to see it, where the signature is if there is one at all, and they they weren't listed down. So that's something I would have liked to have seen. Um, there's a section on how to use the book Necromancy and a player character, uh, what you will need to do. Uh, there are standard Necromancer, uh, their ability scores, requirements, their racial, um, racial attributes, uh, experience level advancement spells. And then uh, there are spell restrictions. Let's see what some spell restrictions are. Necromancers do pay a price for their devotion to the art because of the concentration in necromancy. They forego all trained, uh, all training in the schools of illusion and enchantment charm. As a result, they cannot cast spells from these neglected schools unless the spell also falls under the jurisdiction of the six permissible schools. Consider a sixth level spell enchanted item for example, although it belongs in Enchantment and Charm school, the spell may be learned by a necromancer since it's also taught in the school of invocation. Uh, of course, necromancers do have a more difficult time with studying spells outside the art of this for the first time, a minus 15% chance to learn spells from permissible uh, schools except necromancy. However, despite all of these restrictions, the necromancer has a huge potential repertoire of spells at hand, limited only by the character's intelligence and diligence at spell research. Appendix 1 lists many spells available to necromancers arranged by level and application. So, um, so yeah, so very, very interesting that uh, they've certainly... Um, they've certainly done some, some, uh, thought, put a lot of thought into, uh, how necromancy will fall within the schools of magic and, and how the, um, the wizards will have to, uh, wizards now necromancers would have to adjust to those, uh, alter, you know, those alterations to what they normally could do. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, Death Slayer. A Death Slayer devotes his or her life to destruction of undead, striving always to rid the living world of their abominable existence. Uh, by mastering the art, a wizard gains a greater understanding of these creatures, which are neither fully living nor entirely dead. Death Slayers. Uh, militant opposition to all forms of undead frequently places him or her in direct conflict with other necromancers such as the archetype and the undead master who delight in creating zombie skeletons, ghouls, and other undying monstrosities. Uh, so, yeah, I, I can already see, you know, the opportunities of creating some really unique uh, NPCs for the player characters to encounter and again in a you know in a very system agnostic uh, way you can do that so it doesn't matter if I'm using Dungeons and Dragons or a, a derivative of Dungeons and Dragons like Castles of Crusades or Pathfinder or something along those lines as well. Once again some incredible color art in here. Uh, and the black and white art is very, very good as well. Um, so we have a Philosopher, Undead Master, specializes in the creation of undying minions and the summoning of extra pla uh, planar uh, allies. Other Necromancer Kits, a Witch, a Ghoul Lord, New non-weapon proficiencies, uh, they have anatomy, they have necrology, 
They have the netherworld knowledge, spirit lore, venom handling. Here's some of that black and white art I was talking about. Uh, dual class characters. Uh, so when I was flashing through this uh, really quickly, I was looking at some of these. And so you have the fighter necromancer, the thief necromancer, a cleric necromancer, a psionicist necromancer, um, a thief necromancer. Let's see what that sounds like. To be a dual class thief necromancer, the character must have a minimum 15 dexterity and 17 intelligence, including, of course, the minimum 16 wisdom of the necromancer. This combination does not have many advantages, though. From the character's perspective, the combat abilities, hit points, and thaco of the rogue are only marginally better than that of a wizard. In addition, even at low levels, a wizard's spells can dramatically overshadow a thief's mundane abilities. For instance, who would not prefer a spider climb spell over the usual climbing walls ability. Why pick a lock when you can knock? All right, uh, so they, they pretty much say you can do this, but but it really does make your um, your thief a, uh, you know, really a such a secondary thought uh, to it that you would have been better off, uh, for instance, pairing up with something else. So uh, very interesting, though. Uh, a cleric necromancer uh, is any necromancer providing he or she has an intelligence of 17 or greater, may have previously been a member of the priesthood. The minimum 16 wisdom needed to be a necromancer is naturally the prime requisite of a priest. This combination would seem to be a great benefit to the character, but it raises a number of concerns, chiefly philosophical about a fundamental difference and incompatibility between wizards and priests, especially those that worship death. Of all combinations, the cleric mag uh, necromancer is the rarest of all combinations. The cleric necromancer, uh, uh, most times consuming to generate, most time consuming to generate and the most difficult to role play. I don't know. That's kind of strange. That's got, you know, I wouldn't think that that's very hard to role play. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a deeper dive into this uh, later on and see uh, Psionicist Necromancer. I don't do psionics. Um, never liked it and uh, will will not use it. So I will skip over that one. Wild Talents. Because of their association with the forbidden and mysterious powers, it is not surprising that some necromancers might develop unusual mental abilities. After all, most necromancers, by right of their unusual mental facilities, high intelligence and wisdom, already have a natural aptitude for psychic disciplines. In the campaign, these skills may greatly increase an NPC's mystique and perceived level of ability. And they go into uh, further wild devotions uh, for necromancers. So there's a whole list of uh, wild traits that they can include. Uh, really interesting so far. I'm, I'm certainly glad that I picked this up. And, and the... the um, the condition of this book is actually very, very good as well. So a good purchase on, on uh, my part. I'm really happy to have picked it up. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? So, oh, we have a breakdown of those things, uh, of those wild traits like food co corruption. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can see so many uses of this to create, uh, you know, really powerful necromancer uh, NPCs for the party to have to deal with. So, um, so I'm, I'm really liking it. Uh, Get the Yankee necromancers talk about combining up some really powerful uh, adversaries there. Um, draconic necromancers, uh, human, uh, humanoid necromancers, drow necromancers, uh, 
Sorcerer's Immortal. Um, undead Necromancers and Death Priests. There were social stigmas attached to necromancy, punishments and handicaps. Then there's a long, long list of spells um, that are going to be from, um, from the two primary classes, whether it be wizard or cleric. And so you have a long list of spells, and, and this is where you get most of your black and white art uh, as well in it. So, uh, yeah, I can definitely see that I'm going to have to redo that spell book. This might be the husband and wife team um, of art here. Although I, I'll have to look at the... Um, This looks like Brahm to me as well. That looks like a Brahm. But it's a, it's a really, really nice book. Um, certainly something I'm, I'm super happy to have picked up. Um, I like the appendix, the way, the way that it... Uh, it, it is all of the spells by um, for wizards and then for priests. And you have the breakdown by level. Um, we have an advertisement here for Dungeon Magazine and Dragon Magazine. Uh, always cool to see those older things here. And um, the roughest thing on this book is the back... The back uh, plating here, it's a little bit worn, but uh, still uh, still somewhat readable. And uh, a couple little spots where there's like a, a looks like uh, initials written on the back. And there's like a couple, oh, like a little sticker. Um, a Scooby-Doo sticker stuck in there as well. So really great pickup. Uh, I am absolutely going to use this in my uh, Castles and Crusades campaign. And uh, my players, since they usually watch my channel, uh, they will kind of know that um, that book is going to get a little bit more fleshed out, uh, no pun intended, uh, for, uh, you know, for their use as well as uh, they'll gain some experience points. And they can look down the road to being challenged by some necromancers in the future so um really great acquisition like i said and uh really happy to bring this uh you know to the channel for you to uh check out and uh as always uh i thank you all for being here uh please remember to like and subscribe and to uh comment in the comment section if you've used this book before uh please feel free to jump in there and and talk about you know how you I chose to use this, whether you're taking whole classes and moving them in, or just spells, or or combination of both, or if you've incorporated it in its entirety into your AD and D Second Edition campaign. Uh, really looking forward to uh, getting that kind of feedback. If there's anything that you would like for me to specifically look at in this book, please feel free to put that in the comment section. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or screen screen. Um, it's almost Halloween, so we're getting there. Um, I, I'm really apropos for doing this. I should have done this book on uh, on Halloween day. That would have been perfect. But um, as always, thanks for joining. I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. Uh, you will have a great uh you know, rest of your day and a great upcoming weekend. And as always, keep those dice rolling and, uh, and keep on expanding your horizons within this hobby, checking out new games, checking out old games, checking out uh, different ways of uh, participating in the hobby, whether it's uh, online or at a local library or gaming shop or at a convention. Um, and, uh, and keep on expanding your group of friends 
that you do play with uh, because that's a really important thing to do as well. So you'll have a great one. Take care.